This Bible is a book of history, the history of the Jewish people, the history of creation, the history of the Gentiles, the book of Acts, and all of that. The Bible is quite a book because it covers a lot of subjects from Genesis through the book of Revelation. But there is one major subject that covered that this book covers from Genesis through Revelation that is by far above and away most important, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you read the Bible and you don't get him, you missed it. You missed it. That was the point of this book. The, John said, these things are written that you might believe and believing have everlasting life. So the apostle Peter called him the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord means he's the sovereign over all the universe. Sovereign, sovereign Lord. He's the owner, he owns it, he controls it. He's the one who puts the sun to bed at night and raises it again in the morning. He's the one who gives you the breath that you breathe. He's the one who keeps all of these things in order as you look out into this universe. Not scattered like a lot of people to have you believe. Everything has its place. So the Lord Jesus Christ is the sovereign over the universe. Then Jesus means that he is the Savior. This is his name of humiliation. Gabriel said, call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Right now, while I'm up here in this pulpit, and then Christ is the anointed one. He's the one anointed of God. And the reason he's anointed of God is because he received all of his power by the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. Being the second person of the Trinity, he could have done it because he had the power of it within himself to do everything he did. But being in absolute and complete subjection unto the Father, everything he did, he did under the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. The New Testament says how that, the, how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. And he did. And so he's the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the Mashiach, the Messiah that they look forward to. But my dear friend, he was anointed as the prophet in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 18 and verse number 15 the scripture says the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet like unto me from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me and to him ye shall hearken he's a prophet of all prophets he's the prophet he's the one who looks into the future and tells you what God is going to do he was also anointed as priest Psalm 110 and verse number 4 says this about him the Lord hath sworn and will not repent thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek he's prophet and he's priest and his priesthood is not limited to Israel he's a priest of all mankind prophet priest and then he's king in the book of Psalm chapter number two and verse number six the scripture says this yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion this is what we're looking for friend we're looking for the king and we're looking for the king to bring the kingdom and we know that this world is about ready to explode I mean explode right before your very eyes but take heart for when you see these things happen look up for your redemption draweth nigh what a day what a week it would be if our Lord Jesus Christ comes back chapter number 2 of Psalm in verse 6 said yet have I set you look at the etymology of that word set and you'll find out it literally means I have anointed my king upon my holy hill of Zion. So the Lord Jesus Christ is the anointed one, prophet, priest, and king. So when we look at the Bible in Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15, we see he's prophesied to come. In Genesis 3.15, long 4,000 years before he was born, the scripture says, of the Lord God said unto the serpent, because Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel here's a prophecy when the Lord Jesus was here 2,000 years ago that was 4,000 years old who could prophesy into 4,000 how many of you in here today know what's going to happen tomorrow much less 4,000 years from now do you believe the Bible there's no book on this earth that looks into the future like the Bible does. It's a book of prophecy. If you take prophecy out of the Bible, you gutted it. The Bible is a book of prophecy. No other book on the face of this earth can even stand where the Bible stands. It is a book of prophecy. When, Bible says in Daniel chapter number 9, verse number 25, after 69 weeks, a total of 70 weeks of prophecy, 
to be fulfilled. If you believe the book of Daniel, you'd know when Christ was going to be born. And the wise men from the east believed it. And they were searching for his star. We have one week that is yet to be fulfilled. And that week is the seven years of Jacob's trouble. It is the seven year tribulation period that is soon to come on this earth. Folks, look outside. You want to see what the tribulation is going to look like? Look outside. You're watching humanity collapse before your very eyes. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come. So Daniel chapter number 9 says when he would be born. Matthew chapter number 1 verse number 23 says how he would be born. And I love this. Matthew chapter number 1 and verse number 23. We read these words. The Bible said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. Hold on. Wait a minute. I thought you were a man of sense, preacher. I thought you were, I thought you were someone who, who thought things through. You mean you believe in the virgin birth? You better believe I do. Earthly man had nothing to do with the birth of Christ. He was begotten of the Father from heaven. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Well, preacher, they don't teach that in our church. Get out of it. Amen. Find you one that believes the Bible. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 tells you how he would be born. Isaiah prophesied of that in chapter 7 verse 14. 700 years before this virgin daughter of Zion, Mary, brought forth her firstborn child and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. I'd love to have been there. Just a fly in the corner somewhere. I'd like to have been there when he was born. And the Bible tells you where he would be born. Now watch me on this because this is important. In the book of Micah chapter number 5 and verse number 2. Micah 5, 2. It says, But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. And he says, from everlasting. So who are we talking about, preacher? Micah chapter number 5, they knew in 2,000 years ago who it was. For when the wise men came, look at Matthew chapter number 2. When the wise men, verse number 1, to get the context, 2,000 years ago when these wise men came from the east, look at what happens. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Balaam prophesied about a star. Yes, he did. Verse 3, when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief... Now watch this. When he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ, where Christ should be born. See this? These people 2,000 years ago had the scripture. They knew where he would be born. Watch them answer this now. Watch his own counselors answer this question from Herod. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Here is somebody that had the light blazing in their eyes. Here is somebody that had the truth right in their hands. Here is Herod that his question had been answered. Where would Christ come from? Herod was a monster. They don't get any lower than Herod the Great. Yet he was given an opportunity here. He was given an opportunity when the wise men came and said, We have come to worship him. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Herod within his own soul began to, began to think about the thing that all people, everybody on this earth is motivated by. And the only thing that can, that can, that can touch it is the Holy Spirit of God. But look at the context now of how God is dealing with the soul of a man. And he'll deal with your soul the same way. Look at it. 
And when he gathered them together and wanted to know where Christ should be born, they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. They were absolutely right. What they said to Herod the Great was absolutely correct. Straight from the Bible. And they quoted Micah chapter 5, verse number 7. And Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. He was concerned about that. When did it appear? How long has it been since this has been brought into fruition? What time element are we looking at? Verse 8, And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Did Herod want to worship the Lord Jesus? No, the murdering dog, he wanted to find him and put him to death. Because he was, a, he, was, he, was, he was somebody that was a counter to his throne. He was somebody that was bigger than his throne. He was somebody greater than his throne. In verse number 9, And when they heard the king, they departed. They were in their innocency. These wise men had come from the east in their innocency. And they wanted to worship the Lord God. Are you hearing like that today? Are, have you come into the house of God and you don't know much about the Bible? But you know that you want to know more? That you want to know more about God? Then that's good. That's a good thing. Look at verse 9. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Now look here, folks. These aren't Jews. This isn't America. This is 2,000 years ago and we have no idea where they came from. A lot of speculation. Some say Zoroastrianism, some say Babylonian, uh, priest of the Chaldeans and all of that. Folks, it didn't make any difference. They wanted to know the truth about this birth, this king of the Jews. And they wanted to know it enough to where they had loaded up a caravan and they had headed west. They didn't anybody preaching to them. There weren't any churches where they came from. They came from the darkness. But they wanted the light. Amen. Are you in darkness? Then you can get the light. Watch this. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, all precious gifts of that day. And being warned, now watch this, now watch this, God intervenes. Herod had been presented with the truth. Herod had had an opportunity to accept the truth. It had come face to face to him. Now watch God intervene. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and be there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. There's only one, just one, who can tell you what you're going to do. There's just one, just one, who reads the heart of a man. God's a just God. I want you to look at Romans chapter number 3. Oh yes, just one. There's just one that's going to tell you everything you say. Every move you're going to make. When you hear the gospel of the Son of God for the first time, He knows what you're going to do. What's that called, preacher? Foreknowledge. There's only one that has that. And that's Almighty God. Romans 3, verse 4. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome, watch this now, when thou art judged. The day will come when all of creation everything that has ever existed and exist is going to come before this eternal almighty absolute being and I don't know exactly all the details of what to expect of it but I do believe that from the first breath that man ever drew until the time of the judgment bar of almighty God life of human beings will flow before them all of them God can do it in a moment of time just like Satan, in a moment of time, showed Christ all the kingdoms of the world. And here's what's going to happen. 
that thou might be justified when thou art judged. Listen to me. Without Christ, you're going to get what you deserve. You're going to get what you deserve. That's the crux of what I'm preaching to you. What do you think you deserve? What do you think of yourself? Who are you? Are you a good person? Yeah, I'm a good person, preacher. Well, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Because you see, you've heard the gospel today. You're like Herod. Herod heard the truth. He heard the truth. His men said in Bethlehem, I've often wondered what happened to them. They were the Bible scholars. They knew exactly where Christ was going to be born. They knew exactly where my, they took him straight to Micah. What happened to them? There's not a word recorded in the New Testament where those men ever got saved. Yet right before their very eyes, they were watching the scripture being fulfilled. And you're seeing it right now. You got to be blind not to be able to see what's happening. I mean, you got to be blind. You got to be blind. America's gone through hard times. We'll go through hard times. The world's gone through hard times, but not like now. This country is on the verge of exploding. And I'm not up here to be a bearer of bad news. I'm not up here to depress you, but I'm up here to tell you something. Thank God for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the shooting and the killing starts, even so come Lord Jesus come. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be something if when they kick your door down to come in and get you, you hear a shout and up you go? Leave them alone. So when thou art judged, when thou art judged, let me say it one more time. Let every man be a liar. And without Christ, you'll get what you deserve. Amen. I deserved hell. Oh boy. I worked for it. I was good at it. I paid, I mean, I would, I put, I put the, my time in for Satan. Oh, I was ready for to receive my wages. Oh yeah, the wages of sin is what? Oh yeah, payday was coming for me, no question about it. I was ripe for the kill. I was ready for judgment. But thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Why did he come? He came to save. How did he come to save? Matthew chapter number 26. And verse number two, you know that after two days, the feast of the Passover and the son of man is betrayed to be what? Man, crucified. That's awful. I'd rather be shot a thousand times. The guillotines fast. There's a lot of ways to leave this world, but crucifixion, that's one of the most horrid things a human mind has ever imagined. And yet in the counsels of eternity in God's mind, he chose the cross. He could have chosen a lot of different things. But you see, he told them as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. The Bible tells you that cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Part of the theology of what we believe is, is called the vicarious suffering of death, of Christ. In other words, suffered for me. He was cursed in my place. He was put upon a tree. He was made a spectacle. And there he was, suffering the judgment of Almighty God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He didn't say that theoretically. He didn't say that to, to, to because he's supposed to say it. He said it because God had, had separated himself from him. Amen. Father, regardless, if you have into thy hands, I commend my spirit. You know what I mean by that? The Lord Jesus died by faith. Even though the Father had denied him, he died by faith and put himself into the hands of the Father. Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah, so shall, come the, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 39. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. People aren't looking for the Lord to come back. No, 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 no. They're not looking for the Lord. They don't care about the Lord coming back. They've been brainwashed. They're Darwinians. 
They've been brainwashed in evolution, denies the Bible, thinks it's just an old book full of fairy tales, no power in it. I'm going to tell you something, there's power in the Bible. The Lord Jesus is coming back. But on all of that, I could read many, many more to you. There's one thing that is never mentioned in all of these scriptures about the Lord coming back. You know what that is? Paul said, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. The mystery is the rapture of the body of Christ. Read about it in 1 Corinthians 15, 2 Thessalonians chapter 4. Read about that mystery of coming for his bride. And then I'll close with this this morning. Turn to Revelation 1, 13. Revelation 1, 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His hair and his eyes were like white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes was a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many wa waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth goeth forth a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his hand, right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and I am the last. They watched him crucified. He died. He suffered. They saw the disciples scattered. It had been a horrible time for the Christian community. The people in those days had been terrible, 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 for the Lord had died on a cross. And then they saw the power of the disciples all of a sudden change. They might not have been in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down, but they saw a change in the disciples. They weren't scared to death anymore. They stood in boldness like Peter did at the gate called Beautiful. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. But you see, it was still bearing down on them. They hadn't seen him. And so the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation written by John about 90 to 95 AD, that book describes the glorified, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that glorified, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ shining in his glory and his power and his might is a type of what you're going to look like when you come up out with that glorified body. Amen. How many of you would like to have a new body? Amen. Mine's wore out. I'll swap with you. It's finished. It's wore out. My soul and my spirit is eternal. Time doesn't affect it. Body's about finished. Even so, come. Lord Jesus, come, and I come and give us that body. You ready for that? You say, that's a pipe dream, preacher. No, it's the truth. The Lord could come back at any moment. I was thinking the other day, I was driving down the road and looked up in the sky, and the clouds were so beautiful, and the sun shining through them. And I looked off, and at that moment, I began to gaze up in there, and I thought, man, wouldn't it be something? Wouldn't it be if we heard a shout? and saw him stop in the heavens and we went up to meet him in the clouds and in the air and gone away from this place. That's how quickly this will end. You say, well, I'll get right. You won't have time to get right. It'll happen that quickly. In a moment, the twinkling of an eye. Father, bless your word and bless the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who is blessed forevermore. We glorify his holy name this morning. Bless his name. Bless his righteous name. And Father, we pray for every soul in this house and those watching this thing over the internet and those that will watch it later. And however form it goes out, we pray that you bless it, anoint it, and use it, Father, to help people. In your holy name I pray. Amen.